Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, I'd like to thank uh, Daniel and organizers for putting up this excellent uh, meeting. Uh, I have a pleasure to, to introduce to you some illustrations about the potentials and uh, what uh, synthetic biology is, is about. Uh, for me personally, I think one of the most fascinating things in the universe are seeds. There are many different types of seeds, but nevertheless, if you think you can carry in your pocket the potential for, for trees or for any large objects, even from the tiniest trees, you can get uh, a big organism which not only replicates the, the original tree, but also adapts to the environment. And the cause for this uh, sort of miracle is the DNA, of course, which is the, the blueprint, the, the storage of information of all the cells, of all the life that we know. And since a couple of decades, we know how to decipher this information. In, in 2001, for example, we uh, got the draft of the human genome of, of about 3 billion uh, nucleotides. And since, since that time, you can see that the speed of uh, uh, the ability of our ability to determine the DNA sequence progressed uh, significantly. Here is the, the slope of the, so uh, the well-known Moore law, which governs the development of computers and, and uh, information storage. And you have to uh, take into account that that's logarithmic scale. And you can see that since about 2007, the slope of this curve is even much faster. So uh, since the, the, the determination of the blueprint of human genome, we progressed by a factor about 10,000 in the speed of, of uh, our ability to determine the sequence. Oxford nanoprobes just uh, uh, announced that they will uh, uh, ship by, by this end of the year uh, the, the DNA sequencer, the size of the USB key, which will be able to determine about one million nucleotides in a couple of minutes. The 1,000 nucleotide genome that was uh, initiated in 2008 was able to decipher in, in about a couple of years 60, 60 times more sequence data than combined in the previous 25 years. Uh, DNA is, as I said, in, in, present in all, all type of, of uh, uh, organisms, and most of the DNA is in, in bacteria, which stores about 80% of all the DNA that is on our planet, which is followed by plants, animals, and, and viruses. If we were ever able to determine all the DNA that's available on the world, we wouldn't have anywhere else to store it except on, on the DNA itself because the storage density, information density of the DNA is much larger than our current uh, media that, that we can use for, to store information. On the other hand, we also know how to modify or, or rewrite this information. We can chemically synthesize uh, DNA oligonucleotides, which can then be combined uh, by ligation into larger segments, such as, such as genes. Technology for the modification of DNA has also progressed in, in, in the last couple of decades, uh, not as fast as DNA sequencing. I think simply because there was no market, there was no really need to, to get huge amount of, of synthetic DNA. But synthetic bi biology is certainly uh, uh, expressing the requirement for, for this technology. So I think we will see in the next coming years a uh, uh, shift in, in, in this technology as well. The milestone for the synthetic DNA was uh, uh, achieved uh, less than two years ago by Craig Venter's uh, uh, group, who managed to synthesize uh, complete genome of, of the first independent organism, the Mycoplasma mycoides. It's composed of about one million nucleotides, and it was synthesized by 1,000 synthetic uh, cassettes which were then painstakingly assembled together in, in, in the complete uh, genome. It was certainly a, a big uh, technological uh, uh, achievement, but nevertheless it, was, it didn't really provide uh, uh, something new because it, it basically copied the information that was already present in, in, in organisms. We, we still don't know the function of, of many of the proteins, even in the simplest of, of those bacteria. The life is simply, simply, simply extremely complicated. Here you can see the metabolic pathways of a cell, uh, and a typical cell, any cell, produces thousands of different proteins that interact, as uh, Nobel uh, mentioned before, in, in, in extremely large number of, 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 of different ways. 
And the aim of synthetic biology is to make our manipulations of, of living organisms simpler, to, to introduce the engineering principles into biological systems by using very similar principles as they are used in, in other engineering disciplines, such as uh, computer sciences, machine sciences, which includes modularity to uh, uh, make independent uh, models which can be combined together uh, by use of abstraction, different levels of organizations of different uh, devices, different parts. We can just forget about the details at the smaller part and then deal just with, with uh, larger devices. Reliability, predictability, and standardization, which should all help to enhance our ability to manipulate biological systems. After all, the cells are sort of ideal factories because cells uh, are, are self-replicating machines. They, they operate on, on very uh, simple uh, renewable uh, materials and they operate at, at nanoscale. As Andy Drew, one of the pioneers of synthetic biology, uh, remarked, uh, synthetic or biology is nanotechnology that, that simply works. Uh, if you look at, for example, at this uh, flagellar motor, it's extremely complex nanomachine. So it, it really, it's at the nanoscale size. It's composed of about uh, more than 30 different parts, and each of those parts is essential for the function of, of this uh, flagellar motor. And we also have uh, devices such as this uh, uh, secretion system, which enables cells to secrete DNA sort of like a, a, through a needle into another uh, host cells. Again, I'm coming to this sort of saint of, of science, uh, Richard Feynman, which is also uh, credited as the father of, of nanotechnology. But one of his remarks uh, was, was really is a sort of the blueprint of the ideas of synthetic biology. He, he said, wrote on a table, what I cannot create, I do not understand, which is one of the really important tools of uh, synthetic biology, namely only if we really understand, if we can really build something, then we really know that we understand all, all the parts. Usually the science, at least biological sciences, is, is works in, in a way, in a subtraction way. So we, we remove or, or, or destroy one of the components and see what effect it, it makes on, a, on a, an organism while synthetic biology uses the opposite approach to build something from the, the basic stones, the, the, the basic elements, to, to see whether something is really the functional requirement or it's just uh, an evolutionary coincidence as, as such things also uh, happen. Uh, but uh, from the point of view of, of affecting our everyday life, I think synthetic biology has many uh, potentials to improve our quality of life in different disciplines, in different areas, in, in health, medicine, Sustainable sources of energy, new materials and bio nanomaterials, information processing, we can make uh, basically operate any, make any type of logical uh, information processing in, in, in cells as we do in, in, in computers, biosensors, bioremediation, and I will uh, display some of the examples in, in, in different areas of potential applications. Probably the most well-known example of the success story of synthetic biology is reconstruction of the biosynthetic pathway of a uh, uh, precursor of, of drug artemisinin, which is used to treat uh, malaria. This uh, artemisinic acid is usually produced in warm wood and it's uh, difficult to, to uh, uh, produce. And the researchers managed to transfer the whole biosynthetic pathway from plant into the uh, bacteria and yeast and increase uh, production to a levels which now allow us to decrease the cost of this drug by, by uh, tenfold. But the main, uh, and, and many of the synthetic, uh, many of the complicated compounds that are produced in, in, in uh, plants or other uh, living organisms are complex and they are made from different uh, several steps from, from different uh, biosynthetic enzymes. So if you envision the, the, this reaction, the, the uh, reaction products travel from one enzyme to another one until we get the, the, the final product. So an idea, an engineering idea would be to, to uh, prevent this, this uh, random the diffusion limited uh, reaction steps by ordering the biosynthetic enzymes in a defined way so that the reaction proceeds from one enzyme to another one so that there's no accumulation of the intermediate and we should get sort of like the fourth factory type of, of, of machines. 
And in fact, something like that already happens in nature. Uh, some of the very complex reactions, such as the biosynthesis of, of fatty acids, are actually produced in, in a multi-enzymatic complex, which uh, has six uh, different enzymes, which are all combined together in a reaction chamber, and each of the products from one reaction step is immediately available for the next step, which significantly increases the, the production rate. Uh, so the idea that we came uh, about was to use the DNA, uh, to use that type of, of uh, molecular uh, uh, scaffold to assemble uh, uh, biosynthetic uh, enzymes uh, based on the different DNA binding domains. In this way, the DNA has the function of a program which directs the order of the enzymes and then therefore also directs the flow of, of biosynthetic uh, reactions. So we realized this, uh, this uh, idea in, in, in bacteria in a, a simple reaction, but since then we, we demonstrated this on, on, on two other, uh, three other uh, reactions. And as you can see here, by, by uh, assembling two uh, enzymes next to another, we increased the, the yield of production by about uh, threefold. Uh, the main emphasis of, of synthetic biology nowadays, uh, at least in, in, in more developed countries, is on uh, renewable, renewable sources of energy. We are aware of the energy problem, of the problem of, of carbon dioxide emissions, and plants are in, in reality uh, ideal factories which transform the, the solar light and capture carbon dioxide to pr pr produce some, some compounds which are Cellulose not really the best to 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 uh, to uh, to, uh, to use as a fuels, but we can uh, engineer uh, uh, microbes to to transfer the, the sugars into the uh, any types of fuels that are compatible with with our uh, current uh, technology, even even for jet fuels. On the other hand. Recently, the efficiency of uh, photovoltaics uh, uh, increased to that extent that it's now better than the efficiency of photosynthesis. So we can use these uh, photovoltaics to capture uh, solar energy into electricity, and we can uh, use this electricity to, to capture carbon dioxide into the formic acid, which can then be converted by microbes again into the fuel, resulting into the, uh, the, the production into the uh, cycle, which has zero uh, carbon emissions and in basically just captures uh, solar energy. As, uh, for, uh, for an example from, from, from medicine, I would like to uh, illustrate it on a recent uh, discovery of researchers from, from Harvard who made a, a DNA-based uh, nanorobot. So they used uh, the DNA uh, sequence which is able to fold on itself. It's the so-called origami technology. And they made uh, the hexagonal type uh, shaped uh, 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 barrel. So this barrel, when it's closed, it can be loaded with, with, uh, with, with drugs. And it's kept in closed condition by those latches which uh, keep it in a closed position. Until these latches interact with uh, different uh, proteins, characteristic proteins, we can select for those proteins. And they, uh, the uh, interaction with those proteins uh, uh, causes release of, of uh, opening of this uh, barrel and allows release of, of drugs to interact with, with cells. So this uh, idea was, was really uh, tested on, on, on cells. And not just that uh, it's uh, released by cells, uh, it can also be modified in a way that it uh, uses the end type of logical processing. So only if cells have simultaneously expressed two uh, different proteins, only in this, uh, uh, only the combination of, uh, uh, they, they called it keys, uh, opens uh, both locks and then releases the content, which is shown here in the case of cells which uh, do not express any of those proteins. They do not uh, cause uh, uh, <coughs> opening of, of this uh, drug container, while the cells that only cells that, that uh, uh, combine the uh, correct combination of, of keys uh, really uh, cause, cause activation of, of this drug. Uh, nature offers many different very complex uh, structures. We might call them nanostructures, uh, such as ribosome, which is really very complex, very efficient machines. 
So the question is whether we can make it better, whether we can make structures that, are, that transcend nature, that are different. I have shown before the DNA origami, so we can use this DNA origami to make different types of shapes, like uh, this uh, shape of Slovenia, uh, measuring about uh, 100 nanometers. But the real challenge are proteins. Proteins are uh, the nano uh, devices that make all the reactions within cells. So proteins are, are catalysts, proteins uh, are responsible for basically all types of operations in, in, in drugs. And proteins, the, the structure, uh, the, the functionality of the protein is defined by their tertiary structure. And this is in turn defined by the primary sequence of the protein. Nature required uh, hundreds of millions of years to evolve proteins to fold into the defined structure. It, it's really a very complex problem. There are 20 different types of proteins and there are, there are multiple cooperative interactions that are required to fold the protein into the defined structure. Currently we can, uh, up to now we are only able to make uh, uh, artificial proteins that are very similar to, to those proteins that exist in, in, in nature. <coughs> So let's look if we can use any of the engineering principle to design new polypeptide structures. Engineers uh, typically don't make a big structure just from one part, but they typically take smaller models which are well understood, which they can fabricate and then assemble together. So we could use the same principle to assemble proteins from the building blocks which we understand well. And the, uh, the, uh, for the building blocks that we could use, uh, uh, we, we thought that the, the best idea would be to use uh, coiled coils. Uh, coiled coils are quite uh, ubiquitous uh, structural domains which are composed of two or more uh, alpha helices which form together a, a dimer or higher oligomer and form sort of a rigid rod. So the dimensions of the proteins are typically a couple of nanometers. So every two turns, uh, the, the distance for two turns is, is about nanometers. So this could represent a quite good uh, building block because we know how to make coiled coils which uh, bind only to a defined pair, so to have an orthogonal, uh, different types of orthogonal uh, base pair. So the idea was to use those rigid building blocks and combine them together by, by uh, uh, interspersing them with, with uh, uh, flexible hinges. So this allows us to, to uh, switch, uh, uh, define the structures by segments which, which form dimers and uh, this allows the, the flexibility. Let, so let's see what, what we could make by, by that type of, uh, those types of structures. You can see here the polypeptide chain with uh, coiled coil forming segments and, and uh, flexible uh, hinges. And when the two uh, uh, segments which are complementary come, come together, they, they are stable. So you can see that by, by, uh, in this way, we could in principle, in principle make a tetrahedron, which is composed of six edges and four different vertices. And the beginning of and end of a tetrahedron is at the same position. So all that we need to make a tetrahedron are six pairs of cold coil segments that only form pairs with themselves. Of course, the orientation is also important, but that's something, uh, details, which I will be pleased to discuss later. So indeed, we tried to make this. So we made the molecular model of this tetrahedron, and uh, we were able to make uh, those six pairs. So for example, P5 peptide only forms a pair with P, P, uh, P6 and not with others. P4 only forms a pair with P3. So this order is not uh, random, so it's, it was well defined. So we had, a, uh, we actually collaborated with a mathematician, uh, uh, an expert in graph theory, and uh, he showed, uh, proved that there are only three different topologies to, to make a tetrahedron. Of course, I am showing this because, not because uh, of a theoretical problem, but because we, we indeed experimentally try to, to make it. So the proteins can be made in E. coli, in, in high yield. We, we simply transform the, the bacteria with, with plasmid, purify the protein, uh, and then we should uh, uh, allow the, the protein to fold into the energetically most stable structure just by decreasing the temperature or removing the denaturing agent. And here you can see the proof. So the, here are the uh, electron microscope images. We have many other uh, 
events, but I think those are most convincing. And you can see here that the stain, the, the uranyl, binds to the, the vertices of a tetrahedron. And here is another projection. So the edge of this tetrahedron is five nanometers as, as we planned. At the end terminal segment, we added a hexahistidine tag, which allows us to bind the nano gold, uh, the two nanometer bits of gold, which are seen here. You can see here that uh, uh, the tetrahedron and with, with two nanometer gold at just one vertex. And here are other projections. I showed you before that the beginning and end of this uh, uh, tetrahedron should come together. So if there are mathematicians in the audience, uh, you have certainly realized that this is the so-called Eulerian trail, uh, which has to begin and end at the same position. And th th this was something that we used to, to prove that we, we assembled the same structure. Because if we put here two uh, parts of the fluorescent protein, uh, they come together and, and exhibit fluorescence only in the case when the beginning and end come at the same position. While if we delete one, one segment, uh, the, 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 the fluorescence is, is not uh, rec reconstituted. So tetrahedron is, of course, just the beginning. In principle, we can make any type of polyhedron as long as we have sufficient number of, of different uh, orthogonal coiled coil segments. And you can also probably think of many different applications. We can use it for drug delivery. You can make envision different types of compartments that open or close upon different conditions, pH, temperature, and so on. So I think we, there's still really quite an exciting uh, future. So instead of summarizing the, the end, I have illustrated just some more examples of, of synthetic biology. I would like to end with, with a quotation that was actually written in the genome of Mycoplasma Laboratorium, which is a quote by Robert Oppenheimer, see, see things not as they are, but as they might be, which I think is, is really what synthetic biology is about. So I'm pleased to answer your questions. Thank you.